In 2020, the importance of laboratory medicine has never been clearer, and driving forward the field of clinical laboratory science and its application in healthcare is more urgent than ever. That's what AACC is all about, and now, as the 2020 AACC Annual Scientific Meeting and Clinical Lab Expo goes virtual, we are here to cover it all for you on AACC TV. We are back at AACC Annual Scientific Meeting and Clinical Lab Expo. This is AACC TV, your daily show featuring all those things you don't want to miss from the meeting and from the wider world of laboratory medicine. Catch us every day right here on the virtual platform. Today we are focusing on innovation in clinical chemistry from disruptive technology to systems-based diagnostic solutions. We look at Visby Medical's personal COVID-19 testing kits, discuss informatics with Darcy Block, and see how they are using diagnostic management teams at the University of Texas Medical Branch, and discuss acute kidney injury with Joe L. Corey. First though, it's time to find out what's happening at the virtual meeting with Kushbu Patel, a key member of the Disruptive Technology Award Organizing Committee. Welcome to the second day of the 2020 AACC Annual Scientific Meeting and Clinical Lab Expo. I'm here to tell you about some very exciting events that are happening today, namely the 2020 AACC Disruptive Technology Award Competition and the AACC Artery Happy Hour. The Disruptive Technology Award recognizes innovative testing solutions that could transform patient care. This afternoon, you can watch the three finalists present their diagnostic solutions to a panel of expert judges. Among the teams competing today are Sherlock Biosciences, whose CRISPR and synthetic biosensor-based platforms can deliver molecular tests that can be used in virtually any setting without complex instruments. The second team, Alcidiag, has developed a blood test that can differentiate bipolar disorder from depression. And the final team, Babies, will feature a digital microfluidics testing platform for neonatal and pediatric diagnostics using low sample volumes. So which of these companies will take home this year's award? Watch the competition at 4.30 p.m. U.S. Central Time to find out. Also, there is an Audience Choice Award, so don't forget to vote for your favorite team. The voting link can be found in the session description and will be open throughout the meeting. After the competition, grab a drink and join us at the AACC Artery Happy Hour, a virtual social event that will feature a fun speed networking format. Those competitors really changing the game there through disruptive technology. Make sure to check out the event to see the winner. Now, the changing way testing is done for the benefit of patients, let's head to Visby Medical in California. Visby Medical was developed to make available highly accurate tests to anybody, anywhere, and for any disease. We said, wouldn't it be great if we could run a format like a pregnancy test doing infectious disease? I always wanted to see how the ideas that we create in the lab can actually make it all the way to actually helping people. The U.S. federal government has taken considerable interest in this device because it meets many of the needs for testing for COVID-19. We have a device that actually works well. Our PCR test and a big PCR machine actually do show matching results. It's the first single-use disposable PCR device. Nobody's ever built a device like this. It's the sincere aspiration of Visby Medical to be able to make them available to people wherever they find a need. AACC TV is brought to you from inside the 2020 AACC Annual Scientific Meeting and Clinical Lab Expo. Featuring interviews with key speakers and updates about the meeting, we've also traveled the world to bring you insights into the global field of laboratory medicine. You will find us on the virtual meeting platform as well as online and on social media. We will bring you a new episode each day of the meeting and make sure to click through for much more from the world of laboratory medicine.
Medicine involves a vast amount of data, almost all of which is produced by the clinical laboratory. The field of informatics helps us navigate through this wealth of information, but it might be a discipline lab professionals are less familiar with. To help us out and to discuss the topic of her session, Informatics and the Clinical Chemist, Exploring the Role and Scope for Training and Careers, I'm joined by Darcy Block. Darcy, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So to start things off, can you just tell us what is informatics? How does it use IT solutions to solve data problems? I'm an amateur, so I'll start with that disclosure. But it's really the science of, of informatics, which is taking that data and making uh, useful information, creating knowledge from it, and then using that to um, improve outcomes and practice medicine in new and different ways. That's my understanding of it. And so then how does informatics relate to laboratory medicine and how well utilized is it in labs? So your introduction was so great and spot on. So we in the laboratory create a wealth of data um, and you know we try to use it to make process improvements. We've used it to improve test utilization, um, but you know, I think that our tools and the sophistication of informatics is evolving and improving. And so I think that we're kind of at a cusp of what can we do next? What are those new and novel and innovative things that we can do with our data now that those tools are available? What is the aim of your session and how do you hope to offer guidance on how lab professionals can both utilize and get trained in informatics? So I'm really excited to hear from Dr. Long and Dr. Jacobs. What is informatics? Um, how can a clinical chemist um, engage in it? Uh, what sorts of projects might we be doing um, that really qualify as, as informatics projects? And what can we be sharing with our trainees to the next generation of lab professionals? So that's what I anticipate we're going to get. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Best of luck during your session. Thanks so much. Data paving the way there to improve the way we do laboratory science. Now, pushing the field forward and improving the patient experience through diagnostic management teams, let's go to the University of Texas Medical Branch. If your test results are not accurate and timely, that will in itself delay patient care. We have to adopt state-of-the-art instrumentation for providing accurate and timely patient test results. We provide over 15 million of tests on an annual basis. At the beginning of the pandemic, it was very challenging for us. The way that we were able to overcome those challenges was a teamwork. The diagnostic management team aids in quick arrival at more accurate interpretation of test results. Our goal is to not just provide the result, but to tell the doctor who's caring for the patient what we think the diagnosis is. The greatest strength of it is for our residents and fellows to sit with a group of knowledgeable clinical laboratorians and understand the meaning of the test to the patient. Every sample is a patient and we have to treat them important in order to save lives. That's why I'm here. The kidney is a complex organ which presents a number of challenges in testing and diagnosis. With us now to talk about his interest in the subject as well as his session titled Laboratory Investigation of Acute Kidney Injury, highlights from the new AACC Academy Guideline, I'm joined now by Joe El Corey. Joe, thanks so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Autry. I appreciate the time to be talking about this with you. What are the most specific challenges in defining and diagnosing acute kidney injury? What does this mean for patients? Absolutely. So the current definition of acute kidney injury, which primarily is a change of creatinine of 0.3 milligrams per deciliter, did not factor in analytical and biological variability, especially for patients with elevated creatinines like chronic kidney disease patients. So in light of more robust biological variability studies, we were able to define new reference change values for creatinine to better detect the disease. We also use that information to define acceptable performance for analytical assays. So for example, a point of care device with coefficients of variation around 10% is not acceptable for detecting AKI. What is the aim of this session? What guidelines has AACC Academy provided in the area of acute kidney injury? 
So the aim of this session is to highlight the main findings from the AACC Academy guidance document. Uh, doctors Nicole Tolan and Melanie Hunig, who were part of the team who developed the guidance document, will also be presenting. And we provide specific recommendations for when to initiate testing, which analytical assays to use, what change in creatinine to consider significant that is based on biological and analytical variability, and discuss the clinical utilities of traditional and emerging biomarkers like TIM2 IGFBP7, which is commonly called nephrocheck, among others. And finally today, why is this area particularly urgent today and why should people attend the session? So for a disease that affects up to half of the patients in the intensive care unit and a third of patients who undergo cardiopulmonary bypass surgery, that's a pretty big deal. We're also learning today that COVID-19 directly attacks the kidneys, affecting up to a third of hospitalized patients who test positive. So people should attend this session to learn more from our findings ask questions, and ensure that their clinical laboratory is using up-to-date and evidence-based practices when it comes to the laboratory investigation of acute kidney injury. All right, Joe L. Corey, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Important insights on acute kidney injury there. Make sure not to miss that session. That's it for AACC TV today and our second show at the virtual AACC Annual Scientific Meeting and Clinical Lab Expo. There's still much more to go from the meeting and much more from us. Tomorrow, we will go in-depth on the virology of SARS-CoV-2 and take a look at what not to miss at this year's Clinical Lab Expo. We'll see you then.